Hello and welcome to the 2017 SWAC Football Highlight Show. I'm your host, Rob J. In this show, we preview every single SWAC team in the conference for 2017. Joining me, as always, is my good friend and uh, color analyst, Daryl Asbury, former Texas Southern head coach and former Jackson State offensive coordinator and quarterback. And Coach, welcome back for another season. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Well, Coach, when you were here in Birmingham, when we you know, got here today, I guess the most glaring thing that we noticed that no changes, no coaching changes this year. Everybody's back from last year. That is, that, and that's always a positive. You look at the chemistry, it gives the, the teams a good chemistry to have the, the coaches, the head coaches back. So that is a positive. Now, when you look at um, the, the teams this year, we're going to take a look at the uh, order of finish, the particular order of finish, a little bit later in the show. But any sleeper teams for you going into this season? It is, Coach. You know, I, I've been, we talked about this on our way up here. Um, the sleeper team for me from the East is going to be Jackson State. Wow. Um, Jackson State was solid defensively. They were solid special teams. Uh, I think the pressure now will be offensively. How fast can we get going offensively? If, if offensively we can score it in the red zone, give yourself a chance, keep the defense off the field, I think they'll have a chance. And then when you look over to the West, Texas Southern. Wow. You know, that's, it, it's, Texas Southern now has uh, no issues, all the problems, facilities picked up. Coach Haywood did a great job of recruiting. But the key is they have their starting quarterback back, Jay Kristoff. He tore his ACL against Prairie View, but now he's back. Uh, we saw him today come in. He's, he's big old boy. He's big, he's big boy. Yeah, he's big old boy. <laughs> and, and, if, and if Jay can stay healthy, I think that's going to be their ticket, you know, in, in the big games. Uh, I think they'll give Southern a run for their money this year. And you know, Coach, here at the SWAC Media Day, not a lot of trash talking, but we did catch up to one player who we had to hold back a little bit. That's Grambling's quarterback, Kincaid. He was flashing his rings and he was clicking them together. So he's ready, man. It seemed like he's ready to go. Well, he, he did make, make it known that his, his pinky finger was empty of a ring. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Kincaid. Kincaid is a, is a great young man. He spoke very well. I mean, the young man has all type of ability. You know, people say, well, you know, he can't stand the pocket and throw the football, and, but he's an athlete. And, and he gets out, he's a winner. He helps his team win, they understand him, and I like the chemistry that Gramlin has. And another uh, hot issue going into SWAC Media Days 2017 is the fact that uh, there will be no championship game, no SWAC title game after this season. And we spoke with Dewar Sharp. We're going to hear from him a little bit later in the show. Your personal thoughts on that? I think it's a good, a good thing, Coach. When you, when you sit back and you analyze the whole thing, when it comes down to finances, it comes down to, to making sure every team understands now we have to beat everyone. Because when you have a, a national championship game, now that kind of eliminates with, with the championship game. Now who wants to be in the national championship game? So now it makes you want to work a little bit harder to be in the national championship game. Go against the MEAC and the SWAC, and I think that's a good, a good decision that they made. Well, everybody's zero and zero right now, Coach, uh, here at the Media Day, which you have been a part of for uh, quite some time. What's the coach's feelings like right now? I mean, what, what are they feeling going up on the stage, talking and all the media around? What's, what, what are the thoughts of a coach doing something like this? Well, talking to some of the coaches, I talked with Coach Sims from Prairie View. Um, he's very positive and you know, a little optimistic, but he, he has done a great job with his program. Uh, we met with Coach Fobbs. Coach Fobbs, you know, he's still excited about his team, uh, very positive, and they're, they're expecting a lot of big things out of the program this year. All right, when we come back, we will preview the SWAC's Eastern Division. That'll be next. You stay with us. It's another full day at the Brown Home. Before this busy mom joined Hope Credit Union and started using their free mobile banking app, she would have been loading her girls up for a trip to deposit a check. Now she can simply take out her smartphone, snap a picture, and make the deposit from anywhere that's convenient. With Hope Mobile, she can also check balances, transfer funds, and even pay bills while she's out with her girls. Join Hope Credit Union today and download our free mobile app. Hope Credit Union. Better banking, better lives. What does it mean to be healthy? To create new traditions while honoring the old. To inspire future generations both at work and at home. To find that work can also be play. To find that reaching a goal is not the end, but rather 
another step along the road. To remember that to give really is to receive and to make choices today, keeping tomorrow in mind. Now's the time to know you have a partner on your journey with the compassion of a cross, the security of a shield, and the power of a card that opens doors to a healthier life. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Live healthy. Live blue. It's good to be blue. And welcome back to the 2017 SWAC Football Preview Show. I'm Rob J. along with Coach Daryl Asbury. Uh, we're getting set to preview the Eastern Conference, Coach. And, of course, Alcorn was picked to win the East. Now, we thought that Alcorn lost a lot of players, but they have a lot of players back from injury. So they're just reloading, man. Yeah, I found that out <laughs> this morning when I talked to, talked to Coach McNair. And uh, we had a, a lengthy conversation and talked about a lot of things. And, but he's very pleased with his players returning. You know, he lost his starting quarterback mm -hmm. against Southern, and they finally got him back in the championship game. But you can tell the timing was off because he, had, he hadn't practiced. He broke his wrist, I want to say. Wow. But for him to be able to come back and, and, and finish the championship game, I thought that was a positive. But all corners going to be still one to deal with. And now I talked with Coach uh, Brian Jenkins at Alabama State, and I asked him about the predictions. You know, they picked Alabama State second, Jackson State third. And he said that uh, that really doesn't hold much weight because he said if you go by that, you just just let that team be the champion. So you put much stock in the preseason polls? Well, you, not really, Coach. You know, you still have to – that preseason polls is for the media, mm -hmm. for the media, the, the SIDs and – but not for the coaches. You still have to play the game. Mm -hmm. uh, if the media could pick a team, a championship team, then you wouldn't need to play. <laughs> but I, I mean, me being a former coach, former player, you don't put much stock in it. But you have to respect it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Jackson State, uh, speaking of preseason polls, had a player on the all swag preseason defensive team, and that's. Um, Keontre Anderson, he was named the preseason defensive player of the year. He was a little excited about that. Jackson State will have a great defense going into this year, man, which, like you said, will make them very competitive. It will, Coach. You know, Keon was, was one of my favorites last year. Mm -hmm. uh, it would come down to him and Javancy for the players of the game. Uh, and I was very pleased with, with Keon. I'm, he's going to bring a very huge uh, excitement to the, to, the, to the team, to the club. He can also do the things that Javancy did. He can play the linebacker in the 3-4. He can stand him up in the 3-4 look, and he can play the defensive line as well. Right. Well, we're going to take a look now at the SWAC's Eastern Division here in 2017. From Alcorn State, Fred McNair. Alcorn State head football coach Fred McNair reintroduced From himself Randall. to the league by leading the Braves to the SWAC title game in his first season at the helm, this after winning the SWAC East Division crown outright. Alcorn returns nine of his key starters, including sensational running back, wide receiver and kick returner Marquise Warford, who missed all of last season with an injury. The return of Warford and the other injured starters makes Alcorn an overwhelming favorite for an unprecedented four-peat. Well, you know, I think, you know, I kind of kind of feel that, you know, I thank the guys for, um, for giving me the number one vote. I mean, I, I do honor them for that, and, and the biggest thing is, you know, it always pressure on you being first. And it always, and it's tough to get there, and it's always tough to, to stay there. So you take that approach, and uh, we know what, we know the battle we have to fight uh, day in and day out. So we're going to take that approach and, and get ready for it. So we, we're being a hunter instead of being the hunters, you know. So we're going uh, to go and fight our battle and get ready for the season, right? <laughs> Alcorn opens the season September 2nd at home against Miles College. Duhart keeping again, and he has his second touchdown run of the game. In Montgomery, Alabama State is looking for its first winning season since 2015 and first Swackey's title in seven years. That will be easier said than done since the Hornets will be replacing two starting quarterbacks as well as leading rusher Khalid Thomas. Well, our expectations is to win, you know, and that's how it is every season. But I'm excited about going into this season. I really am just looking at the results that we've had and the success we've had in the classroom, looking at the uh, mindset of these guys, looking at their work ethic, uh, it, it can do, you can do nothing but be excited. Bama State is picked to finish second in the East, which means absolutely nothing to head coach Brian Jenkins. 
Nah, I mean, you put stock. Look at it. It's like this. I learned this a long time. Al Levine told me this a long time ago. He said, listen, if you're going to put any stock in those preseason polls, then why play the season? Just give whoever you pick number one the trophy and call it that, you know? So, uh, but hey, I, I respect how people see it, you know? It's up to us to make sure it don't fall the way that they pick. Alabama State opens the season September 2nd at home against Tuskegee. Now, everybody in here, go hug somebody. And if you don't, I'm gonna line all of you up and hug every last one of you. Second year Jackson State head coach Tony Hughes believes he has the right formula to improve upon last year's three and eight record. Foundation of your program is built on toughness and work ethic and dependability and a fighting spirit and grinding and pushing yourself to the to the top level. Despite the loss of All-American Javancy Jones, the Tigers' strength this season will be its defense. JSU returns defensive end Keontre Anderson, who has been named the SWAC's preseason Defensive Player of the Year. Oh, it's a great honor, great honor. I want to thank God for um, blessing me with my talent, you know, keeping me healthy, keeping me in his hands. <laughs> JSU opens the season September 2nd on the road against TCU. Optimism is running high in Huntsville as Alabama A&M returns seven starters on offense, eight on defense, and all of the team's specialists. The Bulldogs will have one of the league's best backfields for its familiar pistol offense to go with this entire offensive line. You gotta feed this guy. This guy's a, this guy's a machine. You gotta feed him. But then how do you take the ball out of Octavius Miles' hand? How do you not get the ball to uh, uh, Ladarian Heath and, and Kalis Robertson and Rod Randolph? And then he's backed up by Byron Brower. How do you not put the ball in those guys' hands? So, I mean, that's why they call me coach. I'll figure it out. Alabama A&M kicks off the season September 2nd on the road against UAB. Austin Bray is in trouble. Fights out of it, throws in the end zone. The catch is made. Touchdown, Mississippi Valley. Winning has not come easy in Itabina. In three seasons at Mississippi Valley, Rick Comagy has won three games, although several losses have been close ones. However, Comagy believes the Delta Devils are headed in the right direction. Well, I don't want to think about what we did last year. I want to think about what we're going to do this year. But yeah, a lot of those games that we could have won, but yet and still we didn't. So I'm not going to sit back and, and uh, you know, I've already licked my wounds over those games. So I'm just going to go and push forward. Mississippi Valley opens the season September 2nd on the road against North Dakota State. So there you have it, a look at the SWAC's Eastern Division, uh, Mississippi Valley. We talked with Coach uh, Kamaji, and he's saying that he don't want to think about last year. He want to get everything going this year. What will it take for Valley to finally get over that hump? Well, Coach, you know, Coach Kamaji is, is a very successful coach. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him and his program. He always, his team is, is going to be in shape, they're going to be conditioned. And they're a good-looking football team. Mm -hmm. So I think they just need to come out, win the ones that they're supposed to win, and if they can go out and steal one or two from the ones that they say they can't beat, I think Val will be okay. All right, when we come back, we'll take a look at the Western Division. That's next. You stay with us. Jackson! Get ready for the greatest stage play in the country! Reese Tyre! Mama's boy! About a mother who refuses to let her son grow up and be a man. Starring Robin Givens, the iconic Jack A. Harry, the legendary Shirley Murdoch, Don Robinson from In Vogue, Little Chief from Silk, gospel artist Anthony Brown from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, nephew Tommy, and one of the greatest singers of our generation, Johnny Gill. Saturday, September 30th in the Thalia Hall. Get tickets at the box office, artland.net, or get more info at mamasboytheplay.com. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it. First impression. My way in. But, uh, here's the thing. Can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Can one piece of paper really tell you my whole story? Like, that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or how any time there was an opportunity, I was the first one to step up because I wasn't gonna let my life, my circumstances dictate who I was gonna become. And all of that, that determination, the commitment, the drive, that's me. And that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume. 
and discover new ways to develop great talent like me. What does it mean to be healthy, to inspire future generations both at work and at home, to find that work can also be play, to find that reaching a goal is not the end, but rather another step along the road? Now's the time to know you have a partner on your journey with the compassion of a cross and the security of a shield that opens doors to a healthier life. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. And welcome back to the 2017 SWAC Football Preview Show. Rob J. and Daryl Asbury. And uh, we're looking at the West now, Coach. All eyes on Grambling. They are the black college national champions. They went through the conference last year undefeated, and they're the team to pick to win this year. They're going to be tough, Coach. It'll be tough to beat. It's going to be tough to beat. <laughs> you know, I, I did some research. Uh, you know, anytime you can go and sign five offensive linemen, five defensive linemen, a total of 19 players, and they just ran through Louisiana with eight players out of Louisiana, four out of Texas. And you come from Louisiana and take some players out of Texas, you know, you're stepping on some other people's grass over there. <laughs> but with the rich tradition and the great job that Gremlin has done, Coach Five has done an excellent job. But the key to their success is he's been able to keep his coaching staff intact, and that's very positive. And Devontae Kincaid is picked as a preseason offensive player of the year. Again, we talked with him. Um, he's got. A, he said he has another point to prove, man. So he, he may be dangerous. Yeah, he, Coach, he's a great, tremendous athlete, and he's a leader on and off the field. And when you look at the West, it should be more competitive than the East. You have Grambling, Prairie View, Southern, Texas Southern. And, uh, you know, you mentioned all of these teams will be competitive this year. What's your thoughts on how competitive that, that Western Division will be? The West has always has been the stronger side. You know, when, when you look at you have Grambling, Prairie View, and Southern on the same side. That's, that's pretty tough because you have rich tradition, uh, people that, teams that know how to win on that side. And then it comes down to the Bayou Classic with Grambling and Southern every year. So you're expecting some, some good things over there. And, and speaking of Southern, you talk with Coach, uh, Coach Odoms about uh, Devon Gales, a young man who was paralyzed in the game against Georgia with Southern. What was his thoughts on that? Coach is very pleased uh, with his progress. Uh, he said he was with him a couple of days ago. He's very thankful for all the, the schools that have supported and the prayers that went out. But he said Devon is doing well. His progress is going extremely well. All right. Well, let's take a look now at the Western Division of the SWAC in 2017. They bring five, and Chase Kincaid, who on the move, floats it downfield, and a high-reaching catch. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, Berlin Hunter. Year in and year out, the talent level at Grambling is arguably the best in the SWAC. And despite the loss of talented receivers Verlin Hunter and Chad Williams, the G-Men lead the conference with 14 players named to the preseason all-conference team. Look at the elevation, the one-hand grab. That would make Odell Beckham proud. Well, I tell you, things have gone well. You know, uh, all of our players have been here for the majority of the summer. Uh, it's good to have all of, all of them here working out and doing the things that they need to do to be successful. Uh, and anytime you have, you know, 95% of all your players there, you have a chance to really grow and develop. So uh, they're doing a good job of, of really uh, banging the weight room and getting out on the field and, and throwing and doing things on their own. So we're excited about it. Quarterback Devontae Kincaid is the choice for SWAC preseason offensive player of the year after leading the Tigers to a conference best 11 wins, a SWAC title, and a Celebration Bowl championship, making him hungry for more hardware. He rings oh yeah, I mean, I like the way they feel, so I'm kind of looking forward to getting more. You know, me and my teammates, we, we push each other every day because we, we put that in the past. You know, last year is last year. We, we looking at now. What, what can we do for the, for the community and the teammate, our teammates and our coaches now? So everybody pushing each other to go to the max. Is there, is there more pressure on you now? Um, it's never pressure. You know, in my eyes, pressure make diamonds. It don't never bust pipes. Grambling opens the season September 2nd at Tulane. <laughs> Prairie View took a small step back last season by winning one fewer games, finishing 7-4 after going 8-2 and two in Willie Simmons' first year as head coach. But the Panthers will return the most depth since Simmons took over three years ago, making PVU a legitimate threat in the SWAC West. Uh, again, this, this, this is an exciting time for us at Prairie View A&M. 
Uh, we're moving into year three uh, under under my direction, and uh, we're doing a lot of great things on and off the field. So uh, brand new facilities uh, under the direction of our athletic director, Ms. Ashley Robinson. Uh, can't say enough about the job that he's done in, in leading us into the future as far as being competitive on a national level. Prairie View opens the season September 2nd against Texas Southern in the Labor Day Classic. Power to the air. And Tillery wide open. Southern University will be eligible to compete in the Celebration Bowl for the first time since the inception of the game. The NCAA lifted its postseason ban on SU football, which had prevented the team from participating in the SWAC's only guaranteed postseason football game. The Jaguars are coming off an 8-3 season and went undefeated in conference play until the Bayou Classic. But losing Lennard Tillery, the SWAC's all-time leading rusher, and the school's leading receiver in Willie Quinn will make it difficult to catch arch-rival Grambling in the West. Well, I feel great, man. I think we have an outstanding football team coming back. We just got to put it all together, and I really think that we got a four-year starter quarterback. That, that's always helpful. We returned nine starters on defense, 18 out of 22 plays, so we got depth there. And I think if you can be good on defense and you can get an offense and score some points, you got a chance to be successful. Uh, look ready to see some special team battles. I think that's going to improve for us. And I really think we got a good football team. I'm looking forward to coaching these guys going forward. Southern opens the season in the MEAC SWAC Challenge September 3rd. 2017 is a critical year for UAPB coach Monty Coleman. Entering his 11th season, Coleman is under pressure to turn around a program that has gone 9-35 and 35 the past four seasons since he was named SWAC Coach of the Year in 2012. Uh, but as far as this season, you know, I, I, we're very optimistic. Uh, I'm challenging these guys to make sure that they come back and be leaders. And uh, the thing that we've got to do as a team is uh, find a way to be a little bit different than everybody else in the SWAC and other schools that we play that's non-conference and uh, just go out and win. It all starts in practice, and that's what we'll be hyping in. Arkansas Pine Bluff opens the season September 2nd at home against Morehouse College. And if Texas Southern finds a replacement for talented quarterback Varion Hurts, this could be a special year. A favorable schedule along with a talented defense could make for a breakout season for head coach Michael Haywood. That's a look at the SWAC's Western Division. Now, coach, when we, we've seen the East, we've seen the West, the predicted order finish by the SWAC coaches, they predicted all corn to be the team to beat in the East with Alabama State second, Jackson State third, Alabama A&M, and Mississippi Valley bringing up uh, the rear. On the western side, they picked Grambling State first, Southern, Prairie View, Texas Southern, and Arkansas Pine Bluff in that order. But you don't agree with that so, so much. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that, Coach. Uh, you know, last year I, I picked some, some good ones last you did, year. You did. You almost, you, you almost had dead on it. I yeah. think you were exactly right, though, Coach. We're exactly right. Yes, sir. But I, I, I agree. Well, here, here are my in the East: Jackson State, Alabama State, Alcorn, and m Valley. Okay, wow. You know, again, Jackson State had sound defense, great special teams. The only question mark was offense. They they've made some huge changes offensively. Um, just watching the spring game, the kids are moving around a whole lot faster. So I, that's why I picked Jackson State on the East. When you jump to the West, Grambling, Prairie View, Southern, Texas Southern, Pine Bluff. I predicted um, Alcorn first since they're the defending champs in the East. Uh, had Jackson State second, Alabama State, Alabama a and and Valley last uh, over in the West. I uh, had it Grambling, Prairie View, Southern, Texas Southern, and Pine Bluff. That's the way I see it. So I kind of had it mixed up just a little bit, but for the most part, I kind of agree with the coaches. Yeah, but you remember when I told you they were going to block that punt? Jackson State blocked that punt? Yes, sir. I was did. right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, we're going to come back to close <laughs> things out after the break. Stay with me. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Jackson! Get ready for the greatest stage play in the country. Chris Tyre. Mama's boy. About a mother who refuses to let her son grow up and be a man. Starring 
Robin Givens, the iconic Jack A. Harry, the legendary Shirley Murdoch, Don Robinson from In Vogue, Little Chief from Silk, gospel artist Anthony Brown from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, nephew Tommy, and one of the greatest singers of our generation, Johnny Gill. Saturday, September 30th in the Thalia Mara Hall. Get tickets at the box office, artland.net, or get more info at mamasboytheplay.com. It's another full day at the Brown Home. Before this busy mom joined Hope Credit Union and started using their free mobile banking app, she would have been loading her girls up for a trip to deposit a check. Now she can simply take out her smartphone, snap a picture, and make the deposit from anywhere that's convenient. With Hope Mobile, she can also check balances, transfer funds, and even pay bills while she's out with her girls. Join Hope Credit Union today and download our free mobile app. Hope Credit Union. Better banking, better lives. Dependable, affordable, safe. JTRAN, your way to travel. And welcome back to the 2017 SWAC Football Preview Show. Rob J. Darrell Asbury, giving you our closing thoughts right now. We talked with SWAC Commissioner Dewar Sharp about the SWAC title game, and uh, he talked about the feasibility of having that game. We're going to take a listen to uh, Mr. Sharp right now. The decision to uh, do away with the SWAC championship game, and I talked to some of the coaches, they're starting to buy into it right now. Yeah, I think so. I mean, when you look at the numbers and the trend, I, I think it just made sense. You know, and there, it was hearty discussion in the, in the meeting with the presidents and the chancellors. But I think when you look at it at the end of the day, we just felt like, again, why continue to fight your own bowl game for ticket sales? Let's become a true partner and let's move on with the Celebration Bowl and ESPN and ABC. And I think I thought the presidents and chancellors did a great job. I, I really like the attitude of our coaches who are saying, you know what, we're, we're going to buy into it. Let's see where it goes and how it works. So right now we're really working on the tiebreaker moving forward for next year. And there you have it. You heard the comments from Dewar Sharp, the SWAT commissioner, uh, talking about how feasible it was to do away with the SWAC title game, Coach, and some of the coaches are buying into that, too. Yes, they are. You know, after talking to them and, and they looked at both sides of, of what the commissioner was saying, it made sense. And, and now you just have to go in and, you know, beat everybody you, you're going up against. <laughs> well, Coach, are there any matchups you're looking forward to this season? It is, Coach. I'm looking for the, the Alcorn in Jackson State, the Prairie View in Texas Southern, and, of course, always the Bayou Class at Grambling and Southern University. All right, none before that. No. But it all gets underway September 2nd, Coach. <laughs> exactly. You got butterflies in your stomach like you had last time? Well, I, I do, but I'm, I can hold a mic with one hand now, <laughs> Coach. <laughs> Well, it is sure to be an exciting football season this year. Everybody's theme is not grambling off and uh, it should be a little bit more competitive in the East. And uh, Coach, uh, we're looking forward to seeing you this season, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm ready to get, get started. I mean, I have that, that energy, that football feeling now. <laughs> All right. That's a look at the 2017 SWAC Football Preview Show. I'm Rob J. with Daryl Asbury. Thanks for watching.